Hey guys, Meltdown here in the studio with Detroit legend, photographer extraordinaire, and of course, tons of stories. Uh, Thomas uh, Wechsler. Is it Tom or Thomas? What do you prefer? Tom. Tom, okay, because I see some, on some of your pictures here in the radio station, it does say Thomas, so I wasn't sure. Well, that's back when I was, you know, thinking about stepping up, and now I'm just Tom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for uh, coming by. You've got your uh, you got your Bob Seeger pictures on display right now in the Detroit Metropolitan Historical Museum. Yes, we do. Yeah, tell us about that. Well, it's it came about by um, the people down there wanted to have a Bob Seeger Day. You know, it's official Michigan Bob Seeger Day was last Friday. Okay, and they wanted to have a show there, so. Um, Alex Green, my manager, set it up with them that they could take a look at some of my stuff and see what they wanted to do. And they saw my book, and they realized that <laughs> there was enough pictures of Seeger in that book that they wanted to put them all on the wall there. So they picked out about 30 pictures, and we went ahead and did it, and they made big 16 by 20s of them all. It's really a nice exhibit. It kind of knocked me out when I saw it at first. I, I You know, I never... I'm the, I, I just take the pictures, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? All of a sudden, I walk in, and there's all my, they're all over the wall. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it cracked me up, and, and they had um, my camera case from the old days with all the stickers on it, and uh, my old F3 sitting in there in the, they had like, like a, a, a window display of, of stuff, and I was, um, Knocked out. It was not. It was very cool. Now, are you a? I mean, this might be a stupid question, but are you a picture guy? Like, for example, I have a rock room at my house, and I think I lost track of pictures. I have over two hundred pictures on my walls. Do you have a lot of pictures on your walls, or do you kind of keep it for I, other things? Not on my walls, but I have over um, thirty-eight thousand rock and roll pictures. Oh, wow! I got lucky uh, a while back, back in two thousand eight. Um, Lenny Sinclair. I don't, do you know who she is? Uh -uh. John Sinclair's okay. wife. Anyway, sure. Lenny called me, and sh she's a photographer. She called me. She said, you got to talk to these guys. You're not going to believe this, what they're doing. These guys from Minnesota had a company called Backstage Gallery, and they offered us a free scanning of all of our negatives. You know, and these they're using four-pass scans. It's like the best you can get. Mm hmm and it would have cost me two hundred thousand dollars to get that many done they did it for free wow all they wanted to do is be able to display our work and you know so i said okay <laughs> <laughs> well you, i mean your history goes way back and we're gonna get into as much of it as we can here but uh of course you know obviously we'll talk about the picture with us uh, seeger and uh bruce springsteen <laughs> okay but sure. what was the first like rock picture you took now i think i read somewhere that that you took a picture of the Ed Sullivan show yeah, with the Beatles. But what I was did. the first like in-person rock picture you remember taking? The first in-person rock picture was the same year, 1964, I took a picture of a band that I managed when I was in 11th grade called We Who Are. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first rock picture. And after that, I started working at a music store called Artists Music. And I was the 17-year-old kid driving the truck and, you know, setting up amps and stuff around for different venues. Because back then, bands that were big, like The Doors and Hendrix, they, they didn't have semis with equipment. They just got their, the promoters had to rent or if they were, if the band was sponsored by a manufacturer, they would get the equipment. Well, we had it all at my music store and I was the truck driver, so I always took my camera. <laughs> That's why I got backstage pictures of Hendrix and the Doors and wow. uh, the Birds and uh, you know all kinds of bands that played at at Cobo even before the Grandy Ballroom. That is unreal. So how many times did you see Hendrix and the Doors? Uh, three times. Wow. Each. No kidding. Yeah, I, I was there when the Doors recorded their uh, the album. They did some in Boston and some in Detroit for their live album. That was in 1970. And before that, I saw them twice in uh, 68. Now, in the 70s and the, and the 80s and stuff, were you pretty much a fixture in the rock scene where you had all the shows? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, I knew all the um, union guys. Okay. They'd always let me in because they, cause, cause they, they always wanted to get pictures of whoever was there, you know, yeah. with them. Yeah. And I was the guy. And most photographers just said, no, nah, I can't do that. You know, I did. 
and I gave him the picture the next time I was there. Mm -hmm. So I started getting in no problem. Yeah. And how many of these artists did you actually like become friends with? Well, I, I don't know. Friends is the right word, but acquaintances, mm -hmm. I, you know, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. I mean, everybody from Kenny Rogers to Sammy Hagar, hmm. you know, I've become acquainted with. Yeah, and back in the day when people didn't have cameras in their pockets, I guess you yeah. were the man, right? Exactly. Now everybody's a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and some are good and some aren't. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. <laughs> so where, where's the first time you meet Bob Seger? The first time I met him? Yeah. 1964, he was playing the hideout in Harper Woods, Michigan. It's a place that Punch Andrews um, owned. Mm. He, it was a teenage nightclub. And he was playing there, and so my friends and I from Rochester drove all the way down there to see him, because you know where back then wherever Seeger was, that's where the girls were. And, okay. You know we were in high school, and so anyway, I got down there and we walked in, and the the doorman was a guy named Buzzy Van Houten, and he was a, a an acquaintance of mine as well. I knew him because of Punch. Yeah, I think I've met Buzz. Yeah. Yeah, tall. Yeah, he, yeah. he used to work here. Yeah. Years ago, yeah. Buzzy. Yeah. So Buzzy and I, you know, we talked for a minute, and then I went inside, and there was this really nice girl there. She said, hey, Juan, let's go out to the car and talk things over. And I said, okay. <laughs> and, I, and we went out to, the, to the, her car, and on the way back in, she said, you know, I don't know if we can get back in because, you know, once you're stamped, you can't come back in. Yeah, I no reentry, yeah. I said, don't worry, I know the front door guy. And right then, the side door of the club opened, the bands weren't playing yet. It was still the beginning of the night. Tells you how fast we were in the car. Anyway, <laughs> we, the door opened, and Bob came out to have a cigarette. So I said, let's go over this way. I had met him only briefly. I really didn't know him. I went up, and I said, hey, Bob, can, can we come back in this way? He goes, you guys already in? I said, yeah. He said, yeah, go ahead. So we start walking in. And Buzzy comes up to me, and he said, hey, where's that girl that you were with? I said, what do you mean? She's re she wasn't there. She was back at the door talking to Bob, and Buzzy goes, I won't see her no more. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, did you ever have a relationship with her or no? No. No, <laughs> no okay. So, so then you, you, started to, uh, you started to manage Bob Seeger. What year was that? No, I didn't manage him. I, ro I was his road manager. Well, okay, right, Punch road manager. Punch was okay. his manager always. I got you. Yeah, yeah, for people that don't know, Punch Andrews is a legendary manager from the area, yeah. and he's managed everyone from Bob Seeger to Kid Rock and yeah. everything in between. Um, I started in 1969, as, or 68, actually, as a roadie. My mm -hmm. buddy was the road manager from a guy, uh, Richard Kreutzkamp. We called him Crinkle. Okay. Uh, Crinkle was road manager of Seeger at the time in 68. And he called me and said, hey, one of my guys is sick. Can you come down and help me set up for Seeger at Callahan Hall at U of D? And hmm. I went, yeah, sure. So I went down to the University of Detroit, met him and Seeger and all the guys in the band and stuff, and helped him set up. And then he said to me, he said, you want to go down to Carbondale, Illinois tomorrow? I went, why? He said, because we're playing at Southern Illinois University. I said, okay. This is all in my book. Okay, okay yeah. So we got down there, and I kind of liked being on the road. You know, it was fun. And then we went to St. Louis and then Kansas City and, you know, the whole little Midwestern thing. And uh, it was kind of cool. And then one of his, um, I don't know what happened, but he got sick. I think one of his boys gave him the wrong stuff. He got real sick, had to go in the hospital, and Punch called me and said, you're the road manager now. I went, okay, this was in about... March of 69. Mm. And I stayed road manager until 1974 when I had to back up because Seeger was starting to make lots of money and they needed an accountant road manager. Somebody that, and I can't even add, I'm not good at that, <laughs> subtract, nothing like that. So uh, that's what happened. And were you taking, were you were you road managing and taking pictures or did yeah. that come? Yeah. Oh yeah, I always had my ax with, a camera with me. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe your axe too. Who knows? No axe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you're, you're taking pictures the whole time, and you're just road managing. And then you come back in '74, and then what do you do? Then do you... I started working in the office more. Okay. 
and we had a, a new guy to, to take over as road manager in between me and Bill Blackwell. Oh, yeah, Bill, Who yeah. still works for Bob yeah. today. Right. Um, and Billy was have in his last year of college, so he had to graduate first, and then he did. And he's an accountant and a road manager, perfect for Bob. Yeah. And then Seeger just whew, went big. Yeah, it took off, yeah. Yeah, and I did some album cover work for him. I, I did a lot of stuff for him, a lot of different photos. He'd call me, and, and s he didn't like other people taking his picture. I don't know why, I guess, because I always showed it to him right away. Mm -hmm. And uh, I developed my own film, so I didn't have to wait for labs or anything. Yeah, back in the day, yeah. Yeah. So then that picture that we were talking about earlier with uh, Springsteen, I'm sure you've talked about this a million times, but <laughs> where, was that backstage at Pine Knob? Yeah. Pine Knob, okay. 1978, and, September. And Ken Calvert was back there, and at the time, was he working in radio or was he working for no, the record company? He was working for CBS. Okay. He, uh, he quit radio and became a promotion man. Right. And he called me and he said, listen, I, I got a, a request from Bruce. He wants to go out to Pine Knob and meet Bob. Can you call Punch and see if that's okay? Because I was still in the organization, not officially, but I knew all of the people. And he knew that. So I said, I said, yeah, I called Punch. And he goes, Springsteen? Yeah, sure, bring him out. It's as simple as that. So we went out there and got pictures and. You know, how, how big was Bruce at this point? I, I can't. He was gonna, he was playing Masonic. Okay. So he wasn't uh, he wasn't a monster yet, but he was getting there. Yeah. When I was when I I was getting I was thinking about talking. You'd say, and I put uh, I put the uh, the one record uh, uh the uh, the one to run uh, um, yeah, Born to Run. God. Oh yeah. What an awesome. This is one of my favorite records of all time. I'm not a huge Bruce fan, but that record. It's almost like they just sat in the studio and just cranked out songs. Yeah. Like they were live. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that's the way it was, a lot of it. So then uh, so then you guys go backstage, and had and Bob had never met Bruce before? No. Okay. He went to a concert to see him in Ann Arbor when uh, Bruce played up there someplace. I don't know where. But he, he saw him, and he liked him. So I knew it was going to be a no-brainer, you know. And then they hit it off like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so you're, you're standing there, and Calvert's there, and then uh, uh, Rosalie Trombley, right? Yeah. And she was there. She was from Windsor. CKLW. Yeah. Yeah. And she had a she had a, a, a key uh, part in a lot of these early bands' careers. She was the music director of the most powerful station in 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 the Midwest of America. Mm. Fifty thousand clear channel. Whew, right. All the way down to New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah, she was powerful. And so people wanted to get their uh, their records played on a her station for sure. Yeah. So then, uh, so Bruce meets uh, Bob Seger. Do you remember anything about that initial meeting? Yeah, I was there. I mean, well, did they did, did you you saw him meet at that yeah, point? Ken Calvert introduced them. Yeah. And I said, fellas, let me get a picture. And I had John Rapp, one of the guys I hired years ago. He's an ex Navy SEAL. He was Bob's bodyguard mm -hmm. by that time. I said, Johnny, don't let any of these other photographers in here for a few <laughs> minutes, okay? And they're all out there, you know, in the hallway and swearing at me and stuff. And John's just standing there, not letting anybody in. And I got all the pictures I wanted, and then everybody came in. I mean, I mean, you know, obviously I walk by that picture all the time, but uh, I've seen that picture in Detroit for years. Did 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 you know at that time that it was going to become kind of like iconic? No. Yeah. I just thought it was a good picture of two guys that liked each other. And yeah. Two entertainers that liked each other. And that that became – they talk about that picture all the time. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I think last time Bruce was here, uh, Bob went up on stage with him. Oh, yeah. And the same thing at uh, Madison Square Garden. Bruce, Bruce came out to play a, a couple tunes with Bob. Yeah. When they were there back in, I think it was 2016, maybe. Yeah. You just showed me that uh, picture of Paul Stanley. Are we allowed to talk about that? I don't even know. Yeah, why not? Okay, so you got this picture that you took of Paul Stanley holding up their first gold record. Yeah. Where was that at? That was at Cobo Arena. Okay. Yeah. And so he had never seen that before. No, he didn't see it. And the guy that th – there's a, a gallery in Birmingham called the Robert Kidd Gallery, and – Gerard Marti, he's from Paris, hmm. a French guy that owns it. And he said, do you have any pictures of Kiss? And I showed him that one on my phone. And he said, oh, my goodness. 
that's Paul Stanley. I said, yeah. He goes, I'm friends with him. He called Paul Stanley, <laughs> and he said, hey, listen, I got a picture of you getting your first gold record here in Detroit. And he goes, really? How? And then he sent it to him on a text to his cell yeah. phone. And he goes, oh, yeah, I remember. Who, Tommy took this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and The guy in Kiss knew, remembered me. He said, yeah, well, I was friends with their manager, Bill Alcoin. Yeah. And uh, th- and he said, yeah, put him on the phone. He said, hey, listen, man, can give him one of, one of those. Give him a big one, and, and I'll buy it from him. And I said, okay, no no problem, and we did. So um, Kiss obviously broke out of here, and they played big concerts here. Were you always at those shows? Yeah, I went to most of them. Uh, and, um, How yeah, hard did you try to get a picture of them? I went to all the shows in Detroit. How hard did you try to get a picture of them without their makeup on? <laughs> I actually never... I never took a picture of them without their makeup on. Charlie Oranger from Cream Magazine did. Mm. He took the whole band outside and shot pictures of them. And they, but they knew it. He, yeah, but yeah. he showed me the pictures the next day. I said, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, because for people that, that may be a little bit younger, that was the whole thing, right? Wasn't it to try to get a picture of Kiss without their makeup yeah, on? Yeah, but no, how? You yeah. know, they always wear it or they don't come out. I just heard Ace tell a story about where they were flying into Japan. They had to, and they wanted Bill of Coins to put your makeup on yeah. <laughs> for the people when they land. Then they landed, and TSA, whatever it's called over in Japan, didn't know who they were. They had to take their makeup off, then go back in and put their makeup back on. To show them the pictures yeah. on their, uh, uh, yeah. Their ID, their, their passport. ID, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a crazy time back here uh, in Detroit, wasn't it? With Jay Giles, Seeger, uh, Nugent, uh, Kiss, all these bands. A lot of bands broke out of Detroit, that's for sure. And Detroit was a was a an A market, even though it's not nearly as big as Philadelphia or New York or L.A. But you gotta break it in Detroit if you're gonna make it. Yeah, yeah. You're not the first person to tell me that. I think Gene Simmons told me that almost exactly word by yeah. word. He said you gotta break out in the middle, then the, the coast might get you. Then. Yeah, exactly. That's how Seeger did. He he started playing here, down south, east coast, lower east coast, Florida. Then he went to New York, mm-hmm. and we did w- well there too, but you, not till later. You got pictures with Cooper and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah Grand got, Funk, I'm sure. We we did a tour with Alice Cooper, um, early early in 1969, in the in, I think it was in the fall of '69. We it was were, probably still the Alice Cooper band at that yeah, time. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we were playing in Iowa. We did three dates with them. On the second date, I called Punch. I said, listen, man, can we open for these guys instead of them opening <laughs> for us? And he says, why? I said, because they have a pillow fight at the end of their show, and it takes me and Ace like half an hour to clear off the drums and stuff, to get all the feathers off. And Punch goes, no, you can't. <laughs> and he hung up. <laughs> So we kept on cleaning up feathers for the rest of the tour. <laughs> so have you, did you become uh, friends with Alice? I, I knew him a little bit, not not a lot, but you know, I, they were they were local. They they practiced in a garage in Warren. Yeah. When I met him, um, Leo Fenn was the guy's name, who was like acting as their. I don't know if he was their manager or what, but he. He was a friend of mine because he worked for Cadillac. Mm. And we were always trying to get the Cadillac account to take pictures for our studio. And I went over there one day, and the band was rehearsing in his garage. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stories from uh, Alice back in the, back in the day. Um, when the 80s comes along, were you still taking pictures and stuff? Yeah, not as much, but I, I was. I got married in, in the early 80s, and then we had kids, and I sort of kind of curtailed that part but I had a studio that I worked at and um, we did mostly I was in charge of models hmm. I, I told them that's what I want to do you guys they, they took care took pictures of machines and cars and stuff I liked it, doing the models it was fun or the models with cars yeah both, <laughs> both yeah so so you start slowing down as far as the, as far as the uh, rock shows and stuff go. Were you doing other kind of shows too besides rock shows? Oh yeah. Everything? I did lots of R&B. Yeah. I mean, I me and Donna Summer got along like Is that, that. right? She yeah. Was so cool. She was from Germany. And she came and she was great and uh, 
Natalie Cole, I mm. was friends with her, and, and I knew all the R&B promotion guys are buddies of mine. We used to go out to CHB. I was driving out one time in a limo with um, George Clinton. Mm. He was, uh, uh, and, and CHB is out by the airport in Romulus. So we were driving out there, and Boy George came on the radio. And George Clinton turned that up, and he turned around to me, and he goes, this guy can sing. Well, he was a little more vocal. Right, than right. And, and I went, yeah, I'm hip, man. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, being a photographer back in those days, you got to build up a little bit of trust with the bands, don't yeah. you? Because, yeah. Because nowadays everyone's a photographer like we were talking about. But back in the yeah. day, you know. We had um, Run DMC came to town, you know, rap group. And they were here to work with um, – Richard Golden, yeah, and the uh, the sexy black, specs, yeah, and uh, I took photos of them going around to different stations with the shades and with Richard Golden, you know, and all that. And I got they had a, a meeting at this restaurant. He said, "Well, we're we're going to have lunch now." So I ran up to my lab. These were all color pictures, mm -hmm. so I had to get them processed at the lab. And I had my guy do them instantly. Did them like within 20 minutes. And I came back down there, and I gave them to the band. And, and Run looked at me, and he goes, "You're the fastest photographer I ever seen." <laughs> I said, "Well, thank you, sir." <laughs> and that's when I got my nickname, Photographer. Photographer. Yep. All right. So, was there any uh, artist that that like just didn't like to be? Photograph that you had a hard time getting pictures of. Yeah, or? Freddie Mercury. Oh, really? Okay. He loved taking pictures on stage. Yeah. But he at parties, which I went to several. That one we had at the um, uh, DB, uh, DBs. What is it in 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 Dearborn? The hotel there in Dearborn, the one with the copper windows. Big place. There was a party there for them, and I got pictures of the other guys with DJs and all that. And Freddie was just sitting on on the side of the room by himself, you know, just I guess just being by himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he said to me, he said, "Please don't take any pictures of me." I said, "I won't. I have no intention. If, if, if you don't want it, I won't do it." Well, at least he was nice about it. Yeah, he was. And he said, "Could you please get me a coke?" And I went, "Yeah, sure." I went and got him a coke, and uh, <laughs> he just had somebody go sit down. He said, thank you very much. You're very polite. And I said, well, thank you. You are very polite as well. <laughs> You're not a posh Englishman like <laughs> I expected. He said, oh, no, I'm not posh. <laughs> yeah, that was a great biopic, that uh, the Bohemian that Rhapsody. That movie was great. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I remember watching uh, Black Sabbath one time with Ronnie James Dio. and um, Great singer. Yeah, awesome. Awesome guy, too. Super nice guy. And he... Purposely, I think, because you've got the first two or three songs or whatever the case is, mostly, you know. Yeah. And he, like, he went over every photographer's head and did the devil horns thing, like, just to give them great shots. Was there right. a lot of guys that would do that kind of stuff yeah, for you? Yeah, well, no, there's not that many people that love photographers that I hear. Nowadays, I hear from my buddies. Taylor Swift is one who absolutely adores the photographers. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, my, my buddy Ken, Kenny, um, I don't know if you know him. He's a. I've never met him, but we have we have mutual friends. Yeah, you know, he he uh, told me a story. He said the last time she was in Detroit, she gathered the photographers together, and she said, "Listen, the next time you come to any of my shows, I want you to park right by the back door, so you don't have to walk." to your cars you don't have to pay and your passes will be waiting for you and sure enough the next time she played ford field mm. that wow. happened so i think that's a pretty cool thing you yeah know? it's nice when when bands take care of people like that yeah back in the day when i was telling about telling you about ronnie james dio though he would take those pictures and those pictures would end up in magazines or yeah. the newspaper or whatever nowadays you know people take these pictures and end up on social media like 30 seconds later yeah and they look terrible yeah some of them do look bad yeah yeah i mean a lot of them with phones they're a little you know they can't make them real big i uh had an experience with um WRIF back in the day when mm -hmm. it was over at Broadcast House. 
Arthur was interviewing. I never heard of him, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur was interviewing Deep Purple, mm. and I was there to take pictures of it. And you know, um, Richie Blackmore never shows up. Right. He and he didn't show up to that one either. But Arthur, who knew me and he knew that my wife was pregnant at the time, he goes, "Tommy Tutone, you got a name for that kid yet?" And I said. Well, n not really, no. Uh, you know, and then Ian um, Gillian said, Ian well, Gillian. what about Ian? I went, oh, I like that. And Ian Pace, the drummer, said, yeah, Ian's, that's a good name. And then one of their roadies that was with them was named Ian. <laughs> and so I called my wife from the in-store, or in-store, in, store, or in, store, in uh, Studio, in yeah. Studio phone, and I said, what about Ian? She goes, that's perfect. And I said, Arthur, it's going to be Ian. And all these English guys are going, all right, it's going to be Ian. <laughs> <laughs> so did, did the next time, did you see them again after that? Yeah. And you told them you should name your son Ian? Yeah. 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 And they. Uh, That's something they do remember. Yeah. I Ian Pace remembered me for, and he said, how's your kid? I said, Ian? Oh, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> We called my son Butch all the way up until the day he was born, and to this day, Arthur is the only one that calls him Butch. <laughs> How's Butchie doing? You know. Uh, but uh, no, that, those are great stories, man. Um, you should write a book. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, no, I got you. Um, no, that's awesome. So, when was the last time you shot a a, a concert? Um, the last concert I shot was at Pine Knob. It was uh, Bob was playing, and he called me, wanted me to come out because Rock was going to come out. Yeah. And so I shot the two of them on stage rapping, Yo. believe it or not. Yeah. I said Seegers, I, I said to him, I said, you're not going to go out there and rap, are you? He goes, oh, no, hell no. <laughs> All of a sudden, Rock, Rock starts this rap thing, and Bob comes along with him, and they're both <laughs> doing it. So was it Kid Rock show, or was it Bob's show? It was Bob's show. Okay. But Rock went out and did a, a tune. Yeah, did, did, have you met Kid Rock a bunch of times? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I shot pictures of him for a long time. He's a nice guy. Great guy. Yeah, he's, he's uh, you know, people uh, give him a hard time and, and this and the other thing, but, uh, and I'm starting to talk like him now. He says it all the time, this, that, and the other. But uh, <laughs> he uh, he donates a lot to charity. He's always taking care of uh, my family and me. And even one of my friends who got hurt at his concert, he, he took really good care of him, you know, and uh, that's, a, that's a long story for another time. But, uh, yeah, he's a he's a really good guy. What about other Detroit guys? Have you had a chance to shoot like Jack White or anything? Uh, Jack White, I shot his very first band in my studio. We put up a big parachute behind him, ah. and and the uh, the Go was the name of that band. And years later, I met him at a, a sh another show, and I said, "You remember the picture of the of the Go that you?" He goes, "Yeah." Yeah, you had that studio. I said, yeah, and you and I went over to my house. It was only a quarter mile away from mm. the studio, and listened to the record that you produced. And it, it was. He goes, yeah, you thought it sounded like the Grandy Ballroom. I said, yeah, <laughs> that's right. It it did. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll uh, we'll push everybody towards the Detroit Metropolitan Historical Museum. Uh, that's uh, with your Bob Seger display coming up uh, through September twenty second. How many pictures are there in there? Uh, how many? 36. 36, okay. And they're 16 by 20s. They're real big. Big ones, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, we put all that together thanks to my management, the Green Group. <laughs> That's right. Got to give Alex a plug, even though he's too shy to be on camera. But, yeah, we got to well, give him a plug. he's standing right here, and he's taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, that makes two of us. Well, Tom, thank you so much for uh, coming down and uh, doing this. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I've got to walk around this building a little bit and see some more of your pictures. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much.